I canceled the uh, update, the last two updates, because they came on when uh, we were ready to work, when I was putting it all on. Oh, okay. So I didn't need that. Didn't force it any minute. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good morning, church. And welcome to Bethel. It's a beautiful fall day today. And it's, it's so nice to be able to uh, breathe, <laughs> breathe the air. But it also brings uh, colds and such for people. And uh, as you can see, Donna's not here and Kim's not here. Um, Mike had been uh, away on a golf tournament and he brought a gift home, a cold. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he shared. He gave gift it to. Keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, yeah. So Donna's not well. So uh, and she was worse yesterday than she was the day before. So she's staying home. And since she's Kim's ride, Kim's staying home too. <laughs> We're going to start off with uh, this is the day. that the Lord made this day. Now all we have to do is do what he wants us to do, to be in his will at all times. And prayer is a big part of that. So we're going to pray today and we're going to uh, pray for Katie. I haven't gotten another update since um, they said that they may have to remove the one foot. So um, haven't heard that they have. So we just need to uh, keep, keep her in prayer keep uh, Mike and Donna in prayer. Um, Sam, you're waiting for a CAT scan mm -hmm. and so an upper GI. Possibly, yes. Yeah. So Sam needs prayer too. Does anybody else need prayer? John. How is he doing? Good. Still in chemo? Okay. All oh, right. Yeah. And did that go okay? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's see really good now. Oh, good. Now it's just uh, the cancer that has to has to be gone. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And. Um, pardon? Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Um, anyone that's on the um, Facebook prayer chain. I had put a note in there about uh, Jim Brooks. He used to, uh, well, he used to live down the street from us. That's 40 years ago. Um, and then he lived in that little house over there um, for quite a while. But he was involved in hockey here for years and years. Now he's driving by the school bus. Um, he's retired, but he's he's driving school bus. But he has um, uh, the vocal cords cancer of the vocal cords and he was diagnosed in July and they're going to start the uh, regiment of chemo, no radiation, uh, September the 16th and it'll be for 35 days but it'll be weekdays, no weekends. So that's seven weeks that he'll have radiation um, and he's got to be careful with the sun and everything to that effect. So it's a good time of year because you're not going to be out in the strong sunlight as much as you would be in the summertime. He is having some issues, a lot of ups and downs because of it. 
Uh, Carol also needs uh, prayer, that's his wife, because she's walking this journey with him. And um, their own kids, Tracy and Aaron. Aaron works up here at the at Execulink. And they've got kids, like they've got families too, so they all need prayer. Primary prayer is salvation. Um, and then Laura, right? She has uh, stage four cancer, so we continue to hold her up in prayer. Now, I do have a praise report. Our uh, neighbor down at the end of the street, that um, he was on death's doorstep while he was out cutting the grass the other day. So mm -hmm. he was able to be up and about and, and walking and uh, look totally different and feeling really good. So praise God. And that's Ken. He's been on the uh, prayer list now for quite some, well, since the beginning of the year. Because that's when they discovered he'd had the brain tumor. And thought they had removed it all, but they didn't get it all. Any other prayer requests? That's it? Oh. Uh, the praise report for Lori. Oh, Lori? Yeah, yeah. They, um, so Lori's tumors have reduced by half. Praise God. Some, of them, some a couple of them, they can't even find. So, prayer is working. She oh, absolutely. Might not be saved, but God doesn't. That doesn't stop God from working miracles. And maybe that's just His way to say, "Look, look at me. I can yeah, do this. yeah. I'm here. I've got it. I've got it." Yeah. Um, and Laurie's been on the prayer list for quite some time as well. Yeah. Um, that's Sam's sister-in-law, her brother's wife. And this, uh, she had had cancer once before, right? Yes. Yeah. And this is the same kind, breast cancer? Uh, or is no, this lung cancer? The other type was um, bladder. Oh, the other one was bladder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is breast cancer? This is uh, lung. Lung cancer. All in the lungs, yeah. Get them all? Uh, two different types at the same time in about four or five different spots. Okay. So okay. Just never ever heard of it. Never heard no. Of it, so. All right, so that's a praise report too. Mm -hmm. And we, we still pray for the ultimate healing, that's salvation. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it. Now, uh, Stephanie had told us on Thursday um, that uh, their friend David, he's the one that would come in and help set up with the, uh, the pig roast and such, that his apartment was broken into and mm -hmm. um, Somebody new had moved in there, and he's quite assaultive. Uh, I don't know if that's who had broken in, but he's, he really gives them a hard time. So emotionally, he's having a terrible time, and he's uh, quite frightened. Here in town? Here in town. Here in town? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's uh, the apartment's down at the end of Royal, right at the very end of the street. No, not over on that street. Royal Street is where the CIBC, or what's that? The vet, mm -hmm. the vet's office. Oh, right. Okay. Forty-seven. Okay. Number forty-seven Royal. 47. Okay, it's right at the end of the street. Anyway, it's a little strip of uh, apartments. Yeah. So, yes, that's like you don't like to hear something like that in a small town. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, he needs a touch from God. And now it's my understanding from Stephanie that uh, he does know the Lord. But uh, when you're scared, you're scared. And sometimes it's hard to get hold of the fact that God isn't a God of fear. He's a God of faith. So, and I think he's the one that has the heart problem too. Yeah, so he doesn't need that. And <laughs> as I was saying, I was, I'm feeling a little dizzy today. We've, we had been uh, vacuuming up water and mopping up water downstairs there. And moving the tables and the chairs, dumping the, the vacuum. That, the the, the um, lifting and all of that, that was my job. <clears throat> I wanted him to stay upright. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then you pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. But the, the heart just starts going boop, 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 boop. And it's, um, oh, so what do I do? I went and I got myself a coffee because I wanted something warm. <laughs> Caffeine aggravates it. Mm -hmm. But I use the decaf. Good. Use the decaf. Yeah. 
But I have water here, so I'll use the water. <laughs> anyway, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this sunshine. It is beautiful. And the fresh air. We ask, Lord, that you be with us here. You tell us that we are two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are here in the midst. And we welcome you here, Lord. We want you here. We want to feel your touch. And Lord, we've... We want your presence at all times. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit. We have numerous people to hold up to you, Lord. We lift up Mike and Donna to you and ask that your healing grace is upon them. Bless them, Lord. Give them comfort through this time and let them rest. We lift up John to you, Lord, and we're thankful, Lord, that the, uh, the cataract surgeries went so well and that he's doing well on that. We ask now, Lord, that you continue to look at the cancer and that you touch him and that you heal him. Let them know, Lord, that you've got this, that you're in control, and that you love him. And Lord, we lift up Jim and Carol to you as well. We ask that you touch Jim with your healing grace as well, and that uh, you get rid of that cancer in him, the vocal cords. He's a talker, and that's probably not going to be a good thing for him. But we ask that you just get rid of that cancer. Cancer is such a horrible thing. We give you praise, Lord, for what you're doing with uh, Lori, for reducing those tumors, and ask that you continue to uh, eradicate that cancer, clear it from her body once again. And Lord, we ask that you just get hold of her heart and let her know that you are there. And we lift up Laura to you, Lord, and ask that you hold her tight, Lord, comfort her, heal her, be with her family. Bless them all, Lord. Touch that cancer and let it go. Just throw it away, Lord. Give her strength. Restore her health. And we thank you, Lord, for the praise report with Ken, that he is doing much better. And we pray, Lord, that that continues to happen, that that tumor in his brain is shrinking and shrinking more. And Lord, we lift Katie up to you. She's gone through a terrible time these last four or five years with the effects of diabetes. And we ask that uh, you just hold her, hold her and bless her, heal her, Lord, and be with Randy as well. Comfort them both. And Lord, we lift up David to you and ask that you comfort him. Give him the peace that passes all understanding, Lord, the peace that comes from you, because uh, this world can't give the kind of peace that you do. Let him know that you're with him at all times, at all times. And Lord, I thank you for being with me as well. I know I probably do stupid things. Well, not probably, I do. Help me to use wisdom. Be with me this afternoon, Lord, because I've got a lot of lifting and lugging to do this afternoon as well. Keep me strong, Lord. It's got to be done. And Lord, we lift Samantha up to you. She's got the same bullheadedness as, as I do. You'd almost think we're related. We are. We're sisters in Christ. I ask that you be with her while she's going through all of these tests. Let them find exactly what it is that's causing the problem. And restore her health, Lord. Put the doctors in control and technicians that you handpick so they can see and understand what it is that they're looking at. And above all, Lord, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, announcements? So what's coming up next? Computer went to sleep. Oh, there we go. I talked too long. Okay, worship practice. Oh, um, when, Thursday is best for you anyway, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we'll go, go with Thursday. And if Donna's not here, you'll be here? Okay, we want her to be well. And the outreach fellowship... That's this week is potluck, pot blessing. Yeah. Is that this week already? Um, no. Our next um, week, I mean. Next week. Um, yeah, because we have it. There's there's nothing this week. We had desserts last week. Last week. So yes, pot blessing is next Sunday then. So I've got my timing right. Then yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's just bring whatever you can. Bring what you feel like or, eating. Okay. But make sure you plan you plan on staying and eating as well and sharing with everybody else. Yes. Okay, 
I think that's all we've got up there, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to sing Leaning on His Everlasting Arms.
You know, it's because of the blood of Jesus that we're here today, that we're breathing, that we're walking around, that we're able to tell people about the Lord, because if Jesus hadn't given his life for us, nobody would hear anything, would they? Because the Satan would have won, and that wasn't God's plan. God's plan is that everybody will receive salvation, but we all have to make the choice. And we're still talking about worship. And as you see from here, your worship is your warship. A little bit of a play on words there. <laughs> John 4, 24. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, while speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus told her that God is spirit and that you must worship him in spirit and in truth. He had gone there, he had sat down, and he asked her for a glass of water. And she couldn't believe it, because here he was, he was a Jewish man, she's Samaritan, they don't like each other, they don't talk to each other, and she's a woman, and he's a man, which is another reason they don't talk to each other. But then she asked him, you know, we worship here, you worship there, what's the difference? And he says, the time is coming, where it doesn't matter where you're going to worship. So, but on this uh, verse here, we're going to expand on that because I, I looked up the message version as well and it um, says it a wee bit differently, a whole lot longer. So do you want to go to the message version there? It's who you are and the way you live that counts before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. You have to be true. You have to be true. We worship God with all that we are because of who he is. And we must never stifle the spirit. Do you know what stifle means? 
Oh, I didn't go all the way to the end of it. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship him must do it out of the very being. That means everything that we are, everything that we have. Their spirit, their true selves in adoration or in worship to God. All right. We're going to go to... Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 19. Usually we just do 16 to 18, but 19 is a good one. So do you want to go to that one? Verse 16, always be joyful. Verse 17, never stop praying. Verse 18, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Now, verse 19, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do you know there is a, I asked what stifle means. Nobody volunteered the answer. To push it down, to hold it down. Do you remember a TV program years ago? And I'm showing my age again. Do you, you remember it, Don? Archie Bunker, you're absolutely right. He kept telling uh, his wife, stifle it. <laughs> Wanting to shut her down, to shut her down. And that's what we're not to do with the spirit. We're not to shut it down. It says that uh, stifle is to cut off, to hold back, or to smother. You stifle a cough in an attempt to prevent interruption. And if you're watching um, what they call chick flicks, and the tears will start to roll, you try to stifle the tears because you try to stop them, right? And that's stifling them. But you do not want to stifle the Holy Spirit. Some of our attitudes can and will stifle the Holy Spirit. And what attitudes would that be? <laughs> One is anger. And then there's resentment and jealousy, pride, and especially a calloused or hardened heart. So always be aware of what you're projecting because God is aware at all times. <clears throat> Without the spirit, our attempt at worship is just a ritual. The same is what Jesus always accused the Pharisees of. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. So we have to be honest with God. But you have to be honest with yourself first. Because he already knows whether you're being honest with him. Our attitude has an effect on everything. Let's look at Ezekiel 33, verses 30 to 33. Son of man, your people talk about you in their houses and whisper about you at the doors. They say to each other, come on, let's go hear the prophet tell us what the Lord is saying. So my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. Now this is God talking to Ezekiel. He was a prophet, so he was called the son of man. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words. Their hearts seek only after money. You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays fine music on an instrument. They hear what you say, but they don't act on it. But when all these terrible things happen to them, as they certainly will, then they will know a prophet has been among them. So always be true to what you're going to do or say. Our first message on worship was back um, middle of August, August the 18th. And at that time, I said that we come to church to bring glory to God, to praise him and to worship him. Also that praise is the fruit of our lips and worship is the fruit of our heart. You can't deceive your heart. Praise is a celebration. Worship is an exaltation. We know what to celebrate is. But to exalt, that's to exalt God, is to lift him up, to place him higher than ourselves. When you worship God, you're setting yourself aside. And you're fully embracing him and all of his glory. Romans 12:2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, 
which is good and pleasing and perfect. I've been using Romans uh, 12 throughout this, uh, this series, and it, it's very clear, it's very concise. When you conform to the ways of the world, you can't worship God. To honor God, to worship God, is to put God first in all things. The world wants you to put yourself first before anybody or anything else, especially God, before him. We cannot redefine or change God's standards, but we can let God transform us so that we can be in his will and be the person that he wants us to be. Only God can change the way we think. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. It's spiritual warfare. And that's what we always need to remember. Stop thinking, what did I do? No, go to God first. Our first reaction should be to go to God. <clears throat> Trust God, lean on him, and let him be your strength. You cannot fight the good fight with your own strength, only through the strength of God. And that's the only way we're going to be victorious. Get into his word. Read the Bible. Paul gives us the information that we need to be able to worship God, the same as he instructed the early churches. Stay strong in the Lord. Don't think you're greater than you are. Romans 12:3. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, this is Paul talking, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Humility is primary to worship. Don't think you're better than you are. And having healthy relationships with other people is important as well. If we want strong and healthy friendships, then we have to practice humility. Philippians 2, 3 and 4. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of yourselves, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. So stop and think for a moment on how God made each one of us. We're rather intricate. There's many systems in the body. There's many parts to the body, all of which are important. And each one has a different function. Now, if we compare that to the body of Christ, to the church, there's many parts in the church as well. Christ is the head of the church. Romans 12, 4 to 8. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And that's not the full list of what uh, the gifts are. But what it's saying is, whatever gift you've been giving, do it well. Do it well. God has given us each different gifts, but that gift has no value if you don't use it. Going back to the first verse in Romans 12, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So if you think about it, today 
there are present and future teachers out there, present and future leaders, worship musicians, community advocates, lay pastors, politicians, ushers, listeners, greeters, caregivers, mentors, justice workers, community developers, bless you, and, and the list could go on and on. <laughs> People who are servants of the Most High God, who express their worship to Jesus by serving one another and in so doing, they are serving a world that is hurting, a world that is hungry and seeking what is going on, and they're seeking the love that they want, not realizing it's the love of God, but we are the example, and they're seeking a purpose, and their purpose is found in God. And again, we are the example. And so we have to continue to being that example. You can't beat them over the head. You get a headache. You can't beat them over the head because it's not effective. All you're going to do is drive them away and say that, oh, Christians or believers, that they're nuts. Well, no, we're not. But we have to just plant the seed. Plant the seed. Somebody else will water it. God will make sure of that. We have to be faithful in whatever gift we've been given to reach out to the people. But we have to do it. We have to do it. Okay, we're going to sing a few more songs. Starting off with Revive Us Again.
Father, we thank you for your word today. We ask, Lord, that you help us to be the best that we can be. Help us, Lord, to glorify you in everything that we say and everything that we do. We want to worship you more and more, Lord. Lord, we ask that you be with the folks over at the manor. They're still um, going through the COVID outbreak, and we pray that uh, it continues to be mild but safety still has to be first. We ask that you hold each of them, Lord, comfort them. It's always so difficult when they can't be out and about like they used to be. And it's so hard when the ones that are infected have to stay in the rooms at all times. Be with the workers as well, Lord, because it takes its toll on them as well. It's hard knowing that every time you go to work you have the chance of bringing the virus home. We ask that your hedge of protection is around them at all times. 
And Lord, we ask that you be with the administration of the manor as well. Give them wisdom, Lord, in all that they do. Let them all know, Lord, that they're in your hands and that you love them all. Bless them, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you be with each and every one here today, too, as we prepare to go. I ask that you just fill each and every one with your spirit. Hold them close, Lord. Let them hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. It's so important in order to put one foot in front of the other so that we know we're going in the right way. Use us, Lord. Make us your instruments. And the requests that we sent up to you earlier, Lord, we're sending them up to you again and ask that you hear them and answer them. Eradicate the viruses and diseases that are out there. We love you, Lord, and we give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God be with you until we meet again. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it's by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Praise God. Sammy, yeah. anybody ever tell you you should be taking your hat off when you come into church? Thank you. Consider yourself told. <laughs> Numbers 6, 24 to 26. And this is a priestly prayer, and it's my prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again. Thank you.